Hi again then guys and welcome to another look back into the past of the Forza franchise to Forza Motorsport 2 once again for a car which had an interesting albeit brief moment of fame in a couple of racing games on both Gran Turismo and Forza, Forza 2 and initially Gran Turismo 4 but it was also featured on a couple of other Gran Turismo games as well such as 5 and 6 and the car is an interesting one, not a particularly successful one, or not even a car really that achieved what it set out to do, but an interesting concept, and it would have been a cool car to put Korea, South Korea in particular, more on the performance car map. Now, Korea actually makes some really cool cars. Some Kia and Hyundai performance cars in particular are actually really good, and they're getting better and better, and that's cool to see, because I'm a fan of both of those companies. This one, though, is something completely different. This is more like Korea's Lamborghini, if you will. The Proto Motors, later the Olam Spira. Now, the car is powered by a couple of different engine options. It went through a couple of redesigns, a couple of facelifts. But this particular version that we have on the game is one of the more mid-level versions. Because it has 320 horsepower, just under 300 pound-feet of torque, and it's very light. Extremely light, in fact. 1,090 kilos is very good for a car like this. And even at the time of its release, around 2004, 2005, that made it a whole lot lighter than say a Lambo or equivalent Ferrari. So that's a pretty good start. Now that's not too surprising. Asian cars are typically lighter because they have more of a what needs to be there will be there approach to the interior for instance or to luxury. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Of course, if you want a luxury car, you want those things to be there. But in a performance car, they took an approach which looks more like a Lambo, but actually approaches performance in a similar way to something like a Lotus or a Noble. And that is a very clever thing to do. Because if you enter into a market where you're taking on cars which are pretty much good at everything, such as Lamborghini or Ferrari, then you're going to struggle. If, though, you take on those smaller companies like Noble, TVR, Lotus, a variety of others, which have this more bare-bones, almost track-day approach to a super sports car or a supercar, that is much more of an easy toe-in on the market. And to some degree, that's kind of what the Spira offers. It's not necessarily what they intended, it's more of an all-rounder, Lamborghini style, but what it actually ended up as was more of a track car. And that's a good thing, because it means that the car has potential for track use. Now on both Forza and Gran Turismo, it actually delivers on just that. The specs are different on both games, and even the visuals are different, because the car has a number of different styling options. But one thing that remains the same is that it is an undervalued, but surprisingly competitive choice. Because this car on Forza 2 is pretty well priced, it's about 120 grand. It's a B-class vehicle, 658 PI, and the horsepower per ton, it's not remarkable, but it's just under 300. But you have to bear in mind, of course, you've only got just over 300 horsepower to begin with. So for that, it's actually really good, because the weight is so low. Now, you can drop the weight considerably on this car. You can get it well under a ton. You can, of course, increase the power as well, and you can turn it into something of a track weapon. So with that being the case, when should you use it, and what kind of rivals can it go up against? Well, that's the good thing about this car as well, because in a general sense, you can take it up against, for instance, Italian or British or American high-performance sports cars or super sports cars, and in some cases, supercars, but even better than that is the car is also eligible because of its country of manufacture for Asian events as well, and that's something which, well, no other car really in the game does because this is Korea's main super sports car so it's a unique position for the car to be in and it kind of allows the vehicle to enter this really exclusive club although many people don't realize it it's a car that you can look at and think yeah that's pretty cool but then maybe not think about it again but the reality is this car for Korea is kind of like what Spyker was for the Dutch or what, say, Covini is in Italy, or a variety of other super small companies which offer something totally different on the market that their respective region or country hasn't done before, or at least hasn't done to this level. So if you are an Asian car fan, you don't really have a huge amount of supercars or super sports cars to go with. They tend to end as sports cars, and that's usually as far as they go. 
Stuff like Japanese cars, for instance. You've got your NSXs, your GTRs, your Supras, but very few of them go to the level of being a full-on supercar or a super sports car, especially back in the Forza 2 days. Nowadays, of course, you've got stuff like GTR Nismos from Japan, a variety of others. The new NSX is a perfect example, but this one at the time, around 2004-2005, was in a much more exclusive club. Now, when you actually drive the car, it's a great vehicle to work with. It's so much lighter, as I said, than many of its kind of rivals, like Lambos and Ferraris, a good four or five hundred kilos lighter in some cases, that that gives it such an immediate advantage through tight corners. The car really is a pleasure to work with. You can drift it very easily if you want to. It's mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, but because the weight is so low, the car doesn't feel like a handful at all. Plus, factoring into that point as well, is the fact that it doesn't have a huge amount of power to begin with. So with only 320 horsepower, it's kind of like combining, say, 350Z power with noble weight. And that's a good combination to have. As I said earlier, perfect recipe for an entry-level track car, but with not necessarily an entry-level price. Overall, if you do get the chance to go back in time on the Forza franchise, play Forza 2 today, this is definitely a highlight. It was never one of my favourites at the time, and to be honest, it's not now. I'm not a massive Spira fan, but what I am a fan of is vehicles which do try to be different and kind of succeed. In the real world, this car didn't succeed that well. There are a lot of different variants, but they didn't sell particularly well or even get produced particularly well. But on a game, you can really use the car for what it was intended for and see just how special these alternative vehicles within categories can be. But that's it for this pick overall. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.